A macro for the craft beer community? Hey guys, welcome to Stress Safari. An uneducated perspective on beer reviews. I'm Jake. I'm Zach. This is Labatt Blue Citra. Oh yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And this is something I'm a little excited about. Just a little bit? Just a little bit. A mm. little bit. I mean, I'm like uh, cautiously excited. Why? Because Labatt Blue is kind of an underwhelming beer as is. It's pretty underwhelming. Um, mm. But this this one might change the game up. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It might, it might change it all. Citra hops haven't done us wrong yet. No. No, no they, they have, have not. not. No, they have not. All right. All right, so let's get into that beer education. Beer education. I've never had this before. So uh, this is Blue Citra. This is 4.7% alcohol by volume and 30 IBUs. Um, this is a hoppy session lager, according to them. We've never had a session lager. We've had no. session ale, yes, but never a session lager. Um, and the 4.7 does fit under that 5% guideline, so mm -hmm. it all works. Um, this is from Labette Brewing in the USA, which, uh, interestingly enough, this is actually brewed at their New York Tap House in Buffalo, New York. Oh, Labette Tap House. I thought this was a Canadian beer. That's See, it's not. Um, Labatt is separately owned in the U.S. from it is in Canada, uh -huh. right? So Labatt Blue, the main beer, is imported and then sold under that label. But they create other beers within the U.S. under the Labatt Blue label. Got it. That are made in more of a craft style. So this is a brewed at the New York Tap House. So this is um, brewed in smaller batches. And they also have a New England style IPA. They have a Ghost. Mm -hmm. They have a Rosé. They have a whole bunch of interesting beers that they're making there. Um, so this is independent of Labatt Canada. Got it's it. just the distributor of Labatt Blue within the U.S. And they've gone out and made their own beers. Okay. Now. So it's a whole weird situation. Um, and then it was released on, uh, it appears to be November 24th, 2018. Not 100% sure on that, but that was the only date that I could find. Pretty, so, pretty new beer. Pretty new beer. Um... I got this the second it appeared in our local Giant Eagle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is a different well, Giant Eagle, though, to be fair. This is not the beer Giant Eagle we go to. Oh, is this the, the, the this real local? This is the regular grocery store Giant Eagle, not the crazy giant one. Got it. So the it would make sense that they would get this later, mm -hmm. you know, since they don't get the, the weird selections that somehow show up at our local crazy Giant Eagle. Yeah. But, um, so that's the situation. That's the beer education. Yeah, alright. Well, yeah. I'm ready. Let's take a look at these cans. Let's look at the can. <coughs> I like the can. Yes. Um, it's a good can. Nice green color. Nice nice blue. It's not too aggressive a green, though, either. Not too aggressive. It's nice no. and calm. Mm -hmm. Nice and calm. Like a citra hop. Like a citra hop, yeah. It's nice and chill. I don't like necessarily that the citra is golden. The letters for the citra at least are golden. But it's, it's I can get over it. It's, it's just a simple design. I'm not particularly against it. I do like how it makes it clear right on the front of the can that this is a product of the USA. That this is mm. not a Canadian beer. Yeah. Um, which Canadian. is interesting. Because at this point, I don't even know what to expect from it. Mm -hmm. um, but, good can. Yeah. Good all right. can well, all in all. I'll crack them open? Let's crack them on open. I'm just flying through the episode today. It's pretty basic beer. Basic review, hopefully. Not. Okay. <coughs> Solid pour from the bottle, <coughs> oh, and you got a little bit heavier of a head. That's okay. You know, I gotta win sometimes. I okay, gotta win sometimes. It's cloudier than a regular the bat. I'll tell you that much. Cloudier. The color looks pretty similar, though. Vaguely similar. I want to say there's more head here. Than we would get with a standard. I don't think bat. I've ever like poured a standard Labatt. In a, I've had it in a bottle, but never poured it into a glass. I completely agree. I don't think I've ever seen a Labatt outside of a bottle. Mm -hmm. um, it's not bad. It's it, it's not a very. It, it's not like a particularly good looking beer in a glass. Yeah, this is not a particularly exciting. It's got like looking a thing. brownish yellow tinge to it, and it's 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 whatever. You know, it's just another beer. You know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't look anything crazy. Let's give it a sniff real quick. See if that's different. What it doesn't look like is a macro though. It looks like. Oh, there's that citry. It it both looks and smells like like a craft beer. Like a craft beer. Yes. Um. See, before we do go into tasting, I do have a theory of what this is going to be. Okay. My theory is that because this is a session lager, I don't think there's going to be a lot of hops in here. Mm-hmm. 
I think it's gonna taste like pretty bland with a little hops. That's what I'm good. Think so. That's what I'm thinking. I think it's gonna be heavy on the citra. You I think it's gonna be basically hops? Labatt Blue with like a heavy emphasis on the citra hops. Yeah. That's that's my thing. Well, I just think the concentration of hops in it is going to be low. Oh, okay. You know, I don't I think mean, there's going to be a lot involved. I could see that, but I'm I'm kind of hoping I'm being optimistic about it that they're going to like give me a punch of that citra because I am, I haven't had any good citra hop in a while. It's, especially considering this is essentially half price of a regular craft. Beer. That's what I'm saying. This this is the same price for a twelve pack as we normally pay for a six. Oh, so you're saying that half the price, half the flavor, basically? Well, not half the flavor, half the hops because hops are hops. expensive. That's true. That's my. I don't know. Well, let's find out. Let's yeah, see let's what's just up. Take a let's sip. see. Yeah. Cheers. All right. Yep. Yep. It's like a hoppy lager. It's kind of weird. You definitely get that lager taste. That's such a. I don't actually know how to describe a lager, the taste of a lager, that well because we haven't had that many on here, to be honest. Lagers are just calm and easy. It's just like a bland it's taste. It's a blandness, yeah. Yeah, but then you get that citriness. But you were right. It's a very... They, like, skimped out on the citrus. I mean, for having citrus in big, bold, gold lettering, they skimped out on it pretty big. I'm actually not... I was so high at high hopes. I don't really know. I wouldn't know. say they skipped out on it. It's just, like, you don't get that punch. I don't think they skipped. They skimped. So they didn't give us enough. Yeah, yeah. No, no. That's definitely possible. Because you don't get that punch of hops that you mm. get... <coughs> with a lot said, of things that have showed up, we've never had. We've all only had like citra pale ales, to be, exactly. if we're being honest. Which are already more hop forward. Like pale ales are more hop forward, anyways, opposed to lagers. Yeah. So, um, well, th to be honest, I don't know if session lager is like a real thing either. Like, I've never heard of a session lager. Before. Neither have I, but I never heard of a session ale before um, this either. So. I wasn't familiar with those. Another beer industry theory I have right now, actually, mm -hmm. that just occurred to me. Some tells me that a lot of macro brews are about to start rebranding as session lagers. Think so? Because they already are session ales, essentially. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not ales because ale and lager are different. Yeah. But the under 5% means they fit. The under 5% with a mild flavor profile yeah. is what a session ale is. Yeah. So. All macros are session lagers. No, well, there's a lot of citrus that are pilsners and stuff like that, though. What do you mean? I mean, not a lot of session. There's a lot of macros that are that are pilsners, though. Yeah, yeah, you pilsner can't. is like a subcategory of lager, though. Yeah, but you, it could be a session pilsner. I mean, <laughs> do you know what I mean? If though? I see like, session pilsner, I'm gonna be I'm gonna like, be as far as a branding thing, yeah, I don't I think they would change it, but I, I could imagine like Bud Light being like, you know, start saying. Were America's session lager. I get what you're saying. I do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's. Uh, I don't like this. It's okay. I got a weird taste in my mouth, and it's just I don't know. Mm. The first sip was better than. I don't know. It tastes like like dirt to me. Like I'm getting. It's like, like dirt. Like it's like gritty. It's gritty. got a very gritty flavor. I don't know what it is. Loggers, I don't like in general, but it's like it's like a hoppy lager, so it's like attacking. I don't, I don't like it. See, I, I'm not getting a dirtiness or anything like that. I'm just getting like a. It's not like a flavor dirt. It's like a almost like a mouthfeel, like a. Yeah, it's like the texture of it. It is a weird taste. texture. Like I, it's like a gritty. Like I don't know how to explain it. It's weird. It's just right there, though. Every time I take a sip, it's like. It's, it's kind of thick too. It's oh, man, I just can't talk apparently today. Um, I don't know why I say thick, but yeah, like it's just it's the hoppiness, but it, it's in a it's a different kind of hoppiness that I'm not used to. It's like it it's is almost a different like kind of hoppiness. it's almost instead of like whole hops, it, it's like small segments <coughs> of hoppiness that make it feel gritty, like it's divided very. I know what you mean. It's not consistent. You know what I mean? Yeah, because certain sips you get like a nice punch, and other sips you don't. Yeah. Um, it it is strange um, because this is not how hops are normally used in no. a beer. No, you know what I mean. Uh -huh. it, it's it's really weird. This is a. You know what it's almost like? Huh. It's almost like they took the flavor of a hop mm -hmm. and put it in a beer instead of just 
yeah. having the hops in it. Because I'm not getting like any of the effects of a hop, right? Yeah, there's no I don't get smack. the punch, I don't get the bitterness. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's only 30 IVs. I don't get the punch, I don't get the bitterness, I don't get any of the things I normally associate with an IV or with hops. Mm -hmm. But I get like a weird fake version of the hop flavor. I got you. Almost. I got you. It's very, yeah. very strange. I am not a fan of this at all, though. I have to say that. I don't know if I hate it, but I just don't really don't like the way it makes it in my mouth feel. I think it's just okay. I don't know. It's it really okay. okay. I, it's like, this is below that for me. But let's talk about that in numbers. Let's talk about the numbers. Yeah, let's get into the numbers. So, <coughs> the look. How do you feel on the look here? This is like a three. Yeah, it's okay. It's like a three, I'd say. Honestly, I'm gonna it's, agree with you it's got a gross three. color. Not a very good looking head. Like that brownish yellow. It's just... Mm. It's not pretty. Yeah, it is not a pretty beer. Um, yeah, I'll give it. It's to almost him. got a greenish hue to it. It's I'll almost Mountain Dew. It. Uh, I feel like we compare a lot of beer to Mountain Dew, but we, we really don't. We haven't seen Mountain Dew in a while, so I don't think we have. We can really compare. I don't Mountain think Dew I would ever forget what Mountain Dew looks like. It doesn't look like this. It's like no, it doesn't look like. It's this, like yellow brown. This looks Mountain Dewy. Mountain Dew esque. Mountain Dew esque. It's yeah. got Mountain Dew notes. <laughs> Alright, so how do you feel about the head? I think the head was like like a two. I think it's also a three. You think it's a three? Because it, it, it was pretty decent when it first started, but it, it died you know down what? pretty good. But it, then you get the velveting. It's getting decent velveting. I'm going to go three as well. Yep. I don't think you keep drinking this. I'm not. Like, I was so. I was excited for some more of them citra hops, but. I was excited too. It, 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 it definitely didn't hold to my expectations. How's the smell? It's got a, it's a gritty hoppiness, and I don't like it. The smell? Oh. Yeah. Actually, I think it smells pretty. It's good, very actually. hot forward in the smell. Um, the smell is, I mean, it says that there is a um, what does it say? Bright hop aroma. Bright hop aroma. Which I agree. I all I agree with that. Um, I'm gonna give it. I like the way this smells a lot. I I'm gonna it give it a seven. Too. I'm gonna say seven as well. I think it smells very good. It's very a hot forward smell. It doesn't really smell like. <coughs> It smells like a nice, mild IPA. Honestly, I don't know how it smells that much like hops, or like citra hops, well, hops in general. What it doesn't taste like hops at all. So, so, so mild. Yeah. Like it. Um, so the mouthfeel. Mouthfeel? Oh, mouthfeel oh. for me is like a two. I really just like it. Are you serious? The mouthfeel is a two? Is that like gritty bitterness? All right, I, well, you're officially going two. I don't like it. I think it's not like. Okay. It makes right. my mouth feel like it makes me feel like I'm I'm down in dirt right now. I don't, mm. Okay, so I don't get a lot of mouth coating. I think it's very smooth. Um, it does have a weird coldness that comes with it. It's uh, very cold beer, and not just because it came out of a cold fridge. Yeah. But uh, we talked about this actually last episode that certain beers have a weird like temperature. They kind of do better at. Yeah, kind yeah. of like Guinness feels really icy all the time. Yeah. This has that Guinness style iciness in it, which works really well here, I think, as a lager. Because mm -hmm. lagers, you should be drinking them very cold. You should not be letting them get warm. No, no. So um, I think it works really well. It doesn't work as well on the stout for me, but it works extremely well in a lager. So I think this is actually a really good mouthfeel. I think the mouthfeel on this beer, the smoothness, the mm. easy drinking. I don't know. I mean, it's. it's I think it's a seven. I think I, kind of, I was being a little shitty. But I'm still sick with two. You can stick with I it really too. I really don't like it's it. It's okay. I'm it, kind of interested that we disagree for like the first time. Usually we're pretty. We're pretty right there. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm interested. I'm not like disagreeing with you. You're allowed to. Not no, because like I don't know what it is about this. It just makes me feel feel. It makes my mouth feel like I'm ingesting <coughs> dirt for whatever reason. It's just like reacting with my tongue. It's not good. Yeah. Don't like it. Don't like it one bit. All right. All right, taste. I this. All right, the taste. Drink this dirt some taste more. Taste itself. Let's give it. A, I don't get the dirt at all. It's like this. Itself. It's the middle of my tongue too. Not the tip of my tongue. Not the back of my tongue. Middle of my tongue. There's this like grittiness that I feel, like I was ingesting sand. Like sand was laying in my tongue. It's a grittiness. I don't know how to explain it other than that. Like, I'm not getting that at all. I get it just to like a pleasant carbonation feel on my whole tongue. As far as mouthfeel. So how are you feeling the taste itself? Taste is better than mouthfeel for me. Taste is uh, it's a five. It's, it's just five. It's meh. It's 
just meh. Just average. I don't know why that smile feels happening to me. That's weird. I think I'm dying. You're not dying. <laughs> um, I think that you... I would agree. The taste is pretty average. I think... Well, I think it's above average. I'm going to go six, I think. All right. Um, just because it's not bad. We're divided today. We're divided today. I'm going six. All right. I think it deserves a six. Um, That's okay. Because th this has more going on than... Because we would give like a Bud Light a five. I, I would think this is objectively better than a Bud Light. Or a Miller Light. That's true. But for me... Just step up for me. Um, but it might not be a step up for you. Yeah, it's just kind of right there. You I mean, it's I got mean? more going on, yes, but doesn't do it well enough to justify. Justify six. I gotcha. Yep. For me, I, I think it's okay. All right. So, moving on to the... Um, what's the next thing we do? The one word. The one word. What is the word? Mm. Don't like it. Don't like it. I'm just going to say I don't like it. You just don't like it. Don't like it. Not for me. There you go. Not, Not for me. Not for you. Not for you. So my one word on this beer, it would be... Um, I want to say like misleading. Misleading. A little bit. That's good. Misleading is kind of the word I would go with. Not because the beer itself is misleading. I don't actually have any issues with this. But I feel like macro brew people mm -hmm. might drink this and think this is what IPAs are like. Mm -hmm. This is not what IPAs are. Like, I, I feel like the the packaging itself kind of implies that this is like an IPA style lager. Mm -hmm. Which I've had before. I've had lagers from craft brew companies that I wouldn't say they're like IPA style, but they're like high quality, really well done lagers. Yeah. And this is not what that is. This is like a macro brewery. Almost like clumsily incorporating hops into a beer. That's yeah. kind of what it feels like. So if you're a, a drinker of a Labatt Blue Standard, you might really like this. But don't think this is what craft brews are. No. no this no, no, is no. not what a craft, a properly done craft This is a watered beer. down kind of, <coughs> sort of okay. For me it was terrible, but sort of okay for you version of a craft beer? I, I think as a beer itself it's okay, but I, I think mean, the image it's it trying to present Maybe that's why I'm so biased. Is what I disagree I just with. Don't, I'm just so angry at it for trying to be something that's not. But Yeah, that, that's kind of my concern with it. Is I, yeah. I, I disagree with okay. the yeah. way it's handling Where itself. Where would you drink this? Where would I drink this? I would drink this in any situation it's offered. Um, really? In that no, not any situation it's offered, but any situation it's offered where I like it more than the alternatives, uh -huh. right? So, like any bar I'm at where it's all macros. Got it. And they had this, I would go this. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And also, I would probably choose this over a lot of things I like depending on the mood, right? Because sometimes you're just not in the mood for a stout. Yeah. So, regardless of Guinness being on tap, I would still go with this over a Guinness if it's Guinness or mm. Bud Light Miller Light course. You know what I mean? Uh, for me, this is just like a beer that's a step above Macros. Which it seems like... The, I mean, I'll give you that much. It's a step above, but it's not good enough to like justify a better score than a Macro for me. That's okay. Yeah. I, it's, it's, you, know, you don't have to justify the score. That's why I would not drink this. If I, I it just wouldn't, it wouldn't drink you it. You wouldn't drink it at all? I mean, even if someone gave me a free beer, I'd be like, hey, I'm going to pass, man. Yeah. Well, that's how many beers I had beforehand. But usually, if that was my first beer, I'm not gonna start the night with one of these. I don't see, like that. the thing is, since we should have mentioned before, this beer is only available in 12 packs mm -hmm. in our area. You can't buy this beer in anything less than a 12 pack or more than a 12 pack. So, which is how I know it's essentially yeah. half price because it's it's ten dollars for 12 of these, and mm -hmm. normal craft beers see. are ten dollars for a six. I have a theory about this. It's because they know you're either going to hate it or you're going to love it, yeah. as you can see here. <coughs> so, they make you buy a lot, so even if you hate it, you got to find people to love it. Yeah, but here's the thing, right? I'm going to finish these all. It might take me six months yeah. to drink all 12, mm -hmm. but I will drink all hey, 12. Hey, give some to Dad. He's, yeah, he's I already it offered it to him. I was like, you can have some, man. Mm -hmm. um, but see, I'm excited to have some beer in the house. That's like, the thing. A lot of yeah, I'm gonna be drinking this for a while. Um, okay. Because it's it's just it's easy. Mm -hmm. That's one thing about this beer that is it's easy, easy drinking. 
the flavor is easy. You don't really have to think about it. It's not yeah. really our show's thing. Mm -hmm. This is not a really exciting beer. No, no, no deep flavors. Not. Just a beer. But as far as an easy beer goes, it's not a bad one to reach for. Mm, I disagree. That I disagree, but that's okay. We don't have to agree on all of them. True. So, uh, that wraps it up, guys. It does wrap it up. Yeah. If you liked, leave a like. If you liked it a lot, leave a subscribe. You really liked it. If you really, really, really liked it. Smash that bell. Smash it. Never miss an episode every Tuesday and Thursday. Between midnight and 3 p.m. Here are the scores for today's beer. Here's how it stacked up against other beers we've reviewed.